thinking I've been reading on Romans chapter 12 the first two verses I can't get past and when Brother Marlow was was talking it ties right in I mean I was already feeling that before he spoke and then when he spoke anyways you know this world is a mess like Brother Marlow was saying it's a complete wreck there's absolutely no hope in your work there's no uh, comfort there's no um, security in work there's no there's no comfort in anything in this world. You can attain all kinds of things, but there is no comfort in any of it. There's no peace. There's no stability in anything that you do in this world. And, and so I was thinking about how this world operates. And I talked a little bit about this in, in chapel one time, but I just feel it on my heart tonight. That anyways, they, put, they try to put labels on you. Yes, in this yes. world, they try to tell you what you should be. Oh, well, they look at me, Joel. You are addicted to pain pills. Oh, you're an addict. No, no, I'm not an addict. Uh, you're, uh, you know, you may not make a lot of money, so you're lower class. Or you make a lot of money, so you're upper class or you're middle class. You have this or you have that. No. No. That's not what I am. Don't tell me right. what I am. Right. Uh, you're an air conditioning guy. You are. You you had a little business going on at one point. No, no, I'm not an AC guy. That's not who I am. Right. You go to church. You go to church. You're a Christian. No, you just don't get it. The world will try to manipulate you. The world will try to press you into this mold. And if you allow it to get you into their mold, it will hold you there. And they want to put you in it. They want to identify who you are. They want you. They want to understand what you are. They, oh, you're white. You're black. You're brown. You go to the doctor. Are you married? Are you divorced? Are you single? Who are you? They label you, label you, tell you. Your mind starts to be conformed to this pattern of thinking. We start to identify with what we've been told we are. I'm a man. I'm a white male. No. My social security. No. No. My birth. No. 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 What was Paul trying to say in Romans? Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, they can put labels on me, but that's not who I am because there's a man who went to a cross. He came from heaven. His name was God. And he went to a cross and died. And he shed blood for me. And that's why. That's why I'm not an addict. That's why you're not lower class. That's why you're not upper class in this world. No, I'm a saved child of the king. I've been blood bought and born again. And not just that. Not just that, there's something far more than that. See, once I realized that I was lost and in darkness and that I had no choice but to be conformed to this pattern that the world lays out for me, that I had to say, accept Christ. As the world says, accept Christ. And that's another thing, religion. They want to put a name on you. And are you Baptist? No. No. Are you a Lutheran? Not. Are you a Pentecostal? No. No. I'm none of those things. I'm so far beyond any of that. Because that's what man's understanding is. Man's understanding is, is this. They want to identify who you are. And then they want to be able to say, okay, well, oh, he's an air conditioning guy, so this is what he does. And they understand you. And, they, and they're comfortable with you that way. But see, it does make them feel better about himself. But see, here, here's, here's something that happened to me long time ago. I was conformed to this world. And I became conformed to this world. Hebrews said that to be cautious, not to drift away. Yes. Amen. I became conformed to this world. <laughs> but there was a day when I turned my face back to the Lord. Yes. And he did something to me. The same thing that he can do for you tonight. Amen. The very same thing that he did for me and each and every person here, he can do for you tonight. Yes. See, he sealed me. 
with the Holy Spirit. He placed his spirit inside of me. God himself sent his very own spirit and he came down inside of me. What does that mean? How does that, okay, so he's, what does that even mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that I am no longer a part of this world that you see. I'm no longer Joel Zonneville. I'm no longer an air conditioning or, or an attic. No. 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 See, all the old things have passed away. But behold, when the Spirit of God came into me, everything has become new. Everything has become new. So now, so now there's a name that's written on my forehead. And it's not Joel. And it's not American. It's not AC man. It's not a Golden Corral waitress. It's not a McDonald's hamburger cook. No. No, it's... Jesus. Jesus. See, I'm a child of God because he chose me. He called me and I accepted. I accepted. I just, I challenge anyone here, if you're, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, trust me, believe me, I've been there. I was born and raised in church and I still was there. Amen. So can church save you? No. No. I've heard some things about contemporary music. We need contemporary music in the church. And I'm not coming against contemporary music. I'm not coming no. against the music that we have. But I'm telling you right now that we can bring the best singers. Yes. We can bring contemporary music into the church. Yes. We can offend or we can exalt those that want it and offend those that don't want it. We can bring all the contemporary music in the world. We can bring every fancy preacher into the world, into the church. I'm sorry. Excuse me. But you can do all of that. Okay? But until our heart. Let me tell you something, church. Until your heart. your heart. If your heart's intent is incorrect and ungodly, or if it has selfish ambitions, or you want to bring contemporary music in because you think it's going to bring in a crowd, let me tell you something, it's not. 100% it's not. I've been there. For the past year, I have been there in church, after church, after church, after church. And I, I, there's a couple churches that stick in my mind that they're really big. I spoken there's thousands of two or three thousand people in those churches yeah beautiful buildings and beautiful singers let me tell you what they can sing musicians they can play but what you saw right here with the choir listen to me i was there i've been there for the past year i've been there joel why'd you come home because I was starving. <laughs> you want to know why I came home? That's why I came home. Because I was starving. For what you saw right here that we take for granted. We take for granted. I don't care if the song's 300 years old. I don't care if it's two days old. That song that... Oh, that your daughter, I'm sorry I don't remember her name, Paula. That song was absolutely beautiful. It absolutely blessed my soul. Man. You said you've never sung it before here. But you know what? We've heard some of the best singers in the world. And this young lady right here who came up here and wrote her own song that God. Not a musician who's looking to fill a crowd, uh, a stadium, to make millions in one sitting and, and present this Christ, this conformed, transformed Christ that they present to you. They present it to you in a way that's pleasing to your flesh. It's non-offensive. But let me tell you something. That's not the Christ that I know. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Praise the Lord. 
I can tell you this, God's offended me a few times. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah. That might sound a little hard to swallow, but I'm telling you the truth. And if you're the, telling the truth, you would say the same thing. God's offended me. Well, what do you mean by that? He's offended my flesh, my own will, and my own desire. Because Joel wants to do what Joel wants to do. And I want to do it when I want to do it, where I want to do it, and how I want to do it. And if you're honest, each and every one of us is exactly the same way. But when God steps in, he says, no, no, you're not going to do it that way. Well, I don't like that. I'm sorry, I don't like it. Okay, but that's the key. Listen to me. You can bring music in here. And I'm just using that as an example. I hope I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm really not. But you can bring it in. Come on. Come on. And you can turn what we have here into entertainment. Yes. Entertainment. If we're not careful. Yes, you can. Because what we have here is precious. And I don't take it lightly. See, there was a time when I slept under this pew right here. As a child. And I remember laying there, looking out under here, and seeing people slain in the spirit. I can remember that. And there's many here that can remember that. And Brother Miles said, we've been through desert places. And praise God for it. Because you know what that should do for us? If we start to get eyes spiritual and we open our heart up and we realize, say, look, God's brought us through a desert place for a reason. What is the reason? What are you trying to show us, God? We can't get proud. We can't become exalted no. and we can never take the Holy Spirit for granted we could never take the freedom that we have in this church for granted and there's here's one key Paul said if you have not share your love one for another the day that we start taking each other for granted and listen to me as the world labels you if we're not careful and we do it, I, I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. We do it. We're probably worse. We probably do it worse than most people. We label each other. We label, and I'm just using me as an example. Not, I'm not trying to lift my. It doesn't lift me up at all. I, I'm sure there may be somebody here that's seen me and say, "Well, man, he's not good. What's he doing?" Come on, right? Yeah, if you're under the blood. Or they might say, "By the way, if I use you as an example, maybe." One day you lied or something, and then they see you again, and now you want to put a label on this brother. He's a liar. We do that. Whether we want to admit it or not, or whether we... Listen, it's time we bring things out into light. It is. It really is. Because, look, this place right here is precious to me. And I do not want to see the day, and God forbid that it would happen, and I don't believe it will, because... Uh, I know it won't, but what if you came here one day Bless. better yet, let me put it this way Bless. and again, just my own example to make it personal for me because I don't point anybody out but my son's four years old what happens to him if because Joel Zonneville couldn't stop looking at other people and fix himself. And that we all continued in that path. And this church had to lock the doors. If we didn't continue to support it financially like we should, 100% is it hard to give money? It's, I'll be honest with you, even though... All the money that I made, I never really did. And I want to apologize, actually, to Brother Marlo, Sister Marlo, and the church. I never really did put money in here like I should have. God bless you, Brother John. 
I'm just being honest with you. I mean, I don't, look, I've lost everything. I don't care. It's not, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no. But if you think something, I don't, honestly, I don't, whatever. I've been called a lot of things and I've done a lot of things and, and whatever, man, it doesn't matter. No. What matters is that God, Christ, continues to be the gospel of Jesus Christ continues to be presented in this church. What we have here is something special. It goes without saying, but it's easy to get comfortable and become content. And it's not in the in the in the shout. I'm just gonna say it's not in the shout. It's not in the running around. It's not even in when you come down here and to be prayed for. It's not in that. It's in Christ. It's in your heart. It's in your heart. You can come down here with a hard heart and a judgmental attitude and come down here and Brother Marlowe himself can lay hands on you all day long. But until you decide in your heart that I need help. And that the only person that can help me is God. And the way God helps me is through men of God. That's the order that God has established. And that's the order that we follow here. It's until we turn away from our own iniquities. No matter what we change physically in the church, it's not going to make a difference because the problem will still be there. Take my word for it. I tried over and over and over. You can believe it. Take it to the bank. I tried to fix myself. Oh my God, I tried. I looked up my kids. I tried, but it wasn't until I turned to the man who can. It wasn't until I turned to the man who can. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if you're here tonight, that I'm challenging you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm challenging you. That you decide right now. You can come as I'm speaking if you choose to. You can come at any time if we're singing. If somebody's talking, stand up. You don't even have to come. You can stand up. We'll come to you and pray with you. Amen. But if you're tired of being what this world says you're supposed to be. Or what this world's convinced you that you're going to be forever. Well, there's a God in heaven who loved you enough. To send his only son down and to suffer, suffer. And not only did he send him, but he chose to do it because he loved you. He suffered on the cross and died for you. Why? To set you free from this mold that the world tries to put you in. And to set you free from this nature that causes us to sin and fall away from God. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. There's many people here who have been delivered from many things. Many, many things. Because God is grace, has grace and mercy and love. Amen. Amen. Amen.